hysterectomies are very, very frequent, if not uh, the endometriosis, the uh, fibrocystic tumors, etc. <clears throat> Number seven, aliens show a great interest in human body fluids, that they take samples from the neck, from the spine, from the blood veins, the knee joints, and the wrists. They also inject unknown substances into many of these areas. Eight, a surprising number of abductees suffer from serious illnesses that they didn't have before at least some of their encounters. In some cases, these have led to surgery, long-term debilitation, and even death from causes that the doctors cannot identify. One particular abductee, a wealthy man of, of excellent, robust health, experienced a number of sightings and encounters on his property in Colorado. And he went from being this healthy, robust, active man in a matter of two months. He was dead from a disease. The doctors tried to identify, well, they said that it was a form of cancer. They thought it was a form of cancer so rare that in all the medical literature, less than a dozen cases had ever been reported. And there was no treatment for it, and it was rapid. When they autopsied the man after his death, however, they found something that didn't fit even this rare form of cancer. The leg bone had been scooped out in many, many areas, and these scoops were filled with some blue liquid that they could not identify. Number nine, after encounters, some abductees experience a degeneration of their mental, social, and spiritual well-being. Excessive behavior frequently erupts, such as drug and alcohol abuse, overeating, promiscuity, suicidal depressions that people did not have beforehand. And often strange obsessions develop, and these cause the disruption of the person's normal life and the destruction of personal relationships. <coughs> Ten, aliens show a great interest in sexual relations with both adults and children. We have reports of intercourse forced on a child as young as 10 years old in our reported cases. And in one house where several family members had been experiencing abductions, the mother noticed one morning her four-year-old and six-year-old daughters examine each other's genitals. When she asked why they were doing this, the oldest one replied that that was what the little doctors did when they came and took them from their rooms at night. Eleven. Abductors recall being instructed and trained by their alien abductors. Now this training may be in the form of abstract lessons, philosophy, mathematics, physics, uh, spirituality. It may be actual hands-on training with uh, operating alien craft or other forms of technology aboard these craft or in the facilities they're taken to, and in many cases have reported being shown how to fly the crafts that they're in. Several have told of being taken to computer-like consoles, sitting down and going to work. One person said, I punched in my code and began working. Twelve, abductors re abductees report being taken to facilities in which they encounter not only the non-human beings, but also very normal looking humans, sometimes in military uniforms, sometimes in lab coats, working with the aliens. Very often the setting is or seems to be a scientific laboratory of some sort. One abductee was taken with his roommate to an underground facility that looked like a lab where both humans and non-humans were working, and they were both given injections of some sort. Humans, as I said, working alongside the aliens, and the abductees were told that this was a joint human-alien project to research disease control. One of those gentlemen is now dead after being threatened by these abductors. Thirteen, abductees report several types of alien beings and not just the well-known greys, as, you, as you're probably aware of. They report abductions by large insectoid beings, reptilian beings, and human-looking beings, not just your blonde human-looking beings, but human-looking beings with a dark hair growing very often in a widow's peak hairline. Many, many times they report, many, many times, in fact, I can't think of very many cases where this isn't true, seeing two or more of these physically different sorts of beings working in conjunction. Um, every possible combination is turned up. We have blondes working with reptilians. We have insectoids working with the widow's peak dark-haired humans. We have reptilians with insectoids. And the typical gray beings with all of the above. And some people theorize that one type of being may be benevolent and another may be malicious. But the reports show that all the types work together. 14. 
<clears throat> abductees report being scoffed at, jeered at, and threatened by the aliens who intruded to their lives. One woman was shown a very grisly scene. This is a farm woman in the Midwest. A very grisly scene in which aliens were draining, draining human bodies of blood and then dismembering the bodies. She was told that if she didn't cooperate with the aliens, her grandson, whom she was raising, would end up in that condition in that facility. And these are not terribly uncommon threats. And 15, this brings me to a point that will be very difficult for some of you to accept, and I only ask that you listen to it. I'm simply reporting, I'm not creating, and I'm not advocating. It has to be considered, however, because it turns up so often. Abductees, virgin cases who know absolutely nothing about John Lear, Bill Cooper, or any of that material, haven't heard of this. Recall and report being taken to underground facilities where they have seen grotesque and seemingly impossible hybrid creatures and bats of colored liquid just like you've read about in the most grisly and abhorrent and rejected of all the UFO stories. Bats of colored liquid fill parts of human bodies. We have reports of humans being drained of blood, as I told you earlier, being mutilated, flayed, decapitated and dismembered in areas where these lifeless human bodies are stacked like so many cords of firewood. Again, let me remind you, I made no absolute claims on the reality of the reports, but they are coming from cases as valid as those who have seen the golden bronze, who have had elevated experiences, and sometimes it's the same case has both. 16, aliens come into homes and take away young children leaving the distraught parents paralyzed and helpless to intervene. And whenever a parent reports that he has been able, or she has been able to raise some sort of protest, the aliens insist that the children belong to the aliens, not to the humans. 17, and similarly, the aliens often start an indoctrination program very early in the abduction phenomenon, telling children that they, the aliens, are their true parents, not those humans they left back in the house. And this is, for example, what happened to me at age five, that beings insisted it was my mother, I insisted it was not. I, maybe I'm stubborn a little more than usual. They often tell adult abductees that their own children don't belong to them. These are our children. They belong to me. It's reported over and over. We all seem to just predict the same sentences coming from the abducted parents who are telling what they have seen happening to their children. Now, sometimes the aliens will introduce a figure, usually very human-looking, very, very attractive, dressed in splendid robes and crowns, uh, glowing, which they call the king or the father. And this figure is very impressive, very awe-inspiring to the abductees who encounter this being. Again, there is this indoctrination that we belong to them. 